Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 47 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 48 in the RSV. A Psalm of a Canticle for the Sons of Kor on the second day of the week. Again, we see the sons of Kor, Korah, mentioned here, as in the last several psalms. A canticle is a sacred song, a psalm, for example. Like ourselves, the weeks of the ancient Israelites had seven days, so this would have been on their version of a Monday. Great is the Lord, and exceedingly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain. This refers to Jerusalem and Mount Zion, which are right in the same area. It may also refer to God's city in heaven, where he reigns from a much greater height. With the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion founded, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Jerusalem was to the north of Mount Zion. In her houses shall God be known when he shall protect her. If God protects a city, the people in that city will have the opportunity to know him. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled themselves, they gathered together, so they saw, and they wondered. They were troubled, they were moved, trembling took hold of them. There were pains as of a woman in labor. Worldly human leaders are made uncomfortable by God because he proves to them that there is something greater than themselves, someone who will hold them accountable when they do evil. With a vehement wind thou shalt break in pieces the ships of Tharsis. This is a reference to the destruction of the ships of Josephat, king of Judah, because he made an alliance with King Ochosius of Israel, who did lots of evil things. Because of this, The ships that the two of them worked on together were broken by God, making it impossible for them to reach Tharsis. The location of Tharsis, also called Tarshish, isn't entirely clear. It's often believed to have been located somewhere in the western Mediterranean, but there's so little evidence that it's impossible to say for sure. The whole story is found in 2 Chronicles 20, 35-37. This psalm mentions this action by God out of respect. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God hath founded it forever. God gave Jerusalem to the people of Israel, and while that didn't last forever, it did last for a very long time. The title Lord of hosts refers to the authority of God over the armies of angels. We have received thy mercy, O God, in the midst of thy temple. God shows mercy on the people who worship him faithfully. According to thy name, O God, so also is thy praise unto the ends of the earth, Thy right hand is full of justice. As long as God's name is known, God will be praised all over the world. He brings justice to people as a gift. Let Mount Sion rejoice, and the daughters of Judah be glad, because of thy judgments, O Lord. God's judgments are just, and a good reason to celebrate, especially for the people who at the time lived in Jerusalem and the surrounding area. Surround Sion, and encompass her. Tell ye in her towers, Set your hearts on her strength, and distribute her houses, that ye may relate it in another generation. This part of the psalm doesn't speak to God anymore. It's addressing the people, telling them to talk about the great works of God, to be committed to the strengthening of their land, and to dealing with their property fairly, so that their children will have a future. Because, for this is God, our God unto eternity, and forever and ever, he shall rule us forevermore. That's what God wants them to do. It's when we do these good things that we allow God to rule over our lives. God is our king when we obey his commandments. Like the last one, this is a psalm of praise, but this psalm also uses the greatness of God to encourage people in lives of justice and holiness. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.